Hi everyone, how are you doing? As you can see, I'm happy as fuck because right now we are going to record the most requested video on the history of this channel. Now, you may have not requested this exactly, but we are going to cover a lot of different interesting topics that evolve around the same idea. Joey Jordison and Jay Wimberg. Who's better? Is Jay a good fit for Slipknot? React to Joey, react to Jay, blah blah blah, blee blee blee. So for today, we are going to do the following. I'm going to react to Jay Wimberg. I'm going to analyze all the patterns that Jay has created and composed for Slipknot. We are going to talk about how good of a fit he is for the band or he is not. We are going to talk about Joey. We are going to talk about a lot of different things and it's going to be great and we are going to have fun. Let's react to Jay Wimberg playing Unsainted live with Slipknot. Let's go with the video. And before you say anything, Thing. My TV is right there, so I'm not stupid. I'm just watching the video. Let's go with it. Okay, that's just perfect, that's a brilliant use of all the drum kit, right? He's playing every single one of the toms, that's very interesting, I hate it when drummers have a lot of toms and they actually are not playing them, so that's great, that's brilliant, it sounds great in the context of the whole band. We have the same beat going on twice in the beginning, in the first half there is no bass drum, then he's adding the bass drum, it all has a beautiful musicality and I don't have that much toms as you know, but the beat goes like this. It is great, right? It sounds great, it sounds powerful, it is a beautiful group. Now, would Joey play something like that? Well, we have seen a thousand times Joey playing a lot of different beats with the toms. And the first thing that I must say is that the line of composition that Slipknot had back in the day on their early albums is not the same that Slipknot has now. So, of course, the drumming must be very different. On a Slipknot, we have seen, for example, very powerful, very energetic, almost schizophrenic drum beats like for example the one in Disaster Pieces. But of course there are a lot of different examples that are way way softer. Let's try for example Duality. It does not follow the same line of composition that they had in their early albums. We can even find beats orchestrated around the toms on songs that are actually very fucking chill. For example, Dead Memories. Let's not forget about that one. What I'm trying to say with this is that okay, maybe it does not fit the early beginnings of the band, but we have seen a lot of different variations that were actually both composed and played by Joey Jordison. So is this a beat that he would personally play? Well, maybe not because he did not create it, but I'm pretty sure that he would have done something pretty fucking similar. And what I mean by that is that fucking fits the band perfectly. It is a beautiful use of the musicality and the toms on the context of that fucking song. Let's keep going. Ain't that fucking brilliant. This is probably one of my favorite breaks ever. And not only because it sounds good, but also because when I was learning the song, it really caught me off guard. It's beautiful, it just cuts, it creates a lot of tension. It is very simple indeed, but it has a beautiful, beautiful use of the symbols. It's crazy, it's great, it's fast, and it definitely serves the purpose without doing a lot of noise. It goes like this. Now play it faster, it feels better. It is great.
Okay, the first thing, very important, there are no flams between the bass drum and the snare drum. That may sound stupid, but I don't know, check Pantera, for example, the beginning of Domination full of fucking flams. This is live, not a single fucking flam. Interesting, good. But there is something indeed that really caught my attention. The bass drum keeps going whenever he's playing the snare, and that may look normal, but actually it's not. It is very hard to find Joey doing that. I have a feeling that that he did not like that beat at all and he always tried to give space to the snare drum whenever he was playing that exact same beat and you can find thousands of different examples of that you can check eyeless you can check wait and bleed you can check disaster pieces it does not matter whenever he was playing that beat he was not placing a bass drum at the same time that he was playing the snare and i really believe as a musician that he wanted to create this energy of rushing without the actual need of rushing because it definitely does not sound the same and you can really achieve that feeling and that energy of rushing whenever you take that bass drum away check this out it is a totally different vibe It is not the same, so no, I don't think Joey would do that. As you can see, it is a totally different vibe. And of course, Joey used to play all the notes just with his right leg. That is something very personal. Now, does that mean it does not fit? Probably not, because I'm pretty sure that 90% of the people that are watching this video right now didn't even realize about that. However, I needed to explain myself because it has a different flavor, a different vibe, and it's something that does not happen often whenever Joey is drumming however it sounds great and the most important thing it serves the music so it's great let's keep watching Now, we have seen Joey playing fills a thousand times. Would he do that? Obviously, yes, he would. Singles were probably one of the basic features whenever you were hearing Joey playing drums, okay? So it's something that he was doing all the time. Now, of course, he loved to play the bass drum in the middle of the fills in order to create more complex patterns, for example, like this. However, he did love the singles, and that's great. Now, this is one of the best beats of the whole song, so let's try it again. Beautiful! And I'll tell you why. It's like a blast beat, you know, the bass drum and the snare drum are playing the same ostinato again and again. It's like a basic blast beat, okay? However, in order to make music with the guitar, he's playing the same accents but not with something as strong and powerful like the bass drum or the snare drum, not at all. He's doing the accents with the cymbals, especially with that fucking china that sounds wonderful. And that's why I believe that this beat is not only fun to play, it's also a great composition by this guy right here. So in my opinion, this beat right here is one of my favorite ones of the whole song and it's been an absolute pleasure playing it whenever I was recording this song. It goes like this, it's wonderful. And now please, that feel right there, I think you call that pre-chorus or something like that, that feel with the snare drum, it's something that Joey would do a hundred percent, no doubt. He was always playing rudiments and different patterns on the snare drum before hitting every chorus, for example, the most famous one, let's remember what happens in duality. Right? 
So would he play something like that? Again, maybe not the same thing. But yes, there is a huge probability that he would do something very, very fucking similar. It follows the same line of composition. So I really think that Jay nailed it right here. And also, by the way, the performance is great. Brilliant execution. Let's keep going. That's a wonderful beat and also it is complex, I had to write it down in order to play it because it's not repeating the same patterns again and again, it's complex, you know it has like 4 different parts and each one of them has different patterns going on, I don't even remember the exact notes that he was playing but it definitely has a vibe that we have seen on a lot of different songs by Slipknot, the bass drum reminds me of the pattern that goes on on the pulse of the maggots but it is a little bit faster and again it really serves the music there are also a couple of groups of three with both the snare and also the bass drum going on and again it serves the purpose of creating some tension and rushing a little bit the song without the need to increase the tempo i don't really remember the whole bit but let me play something similar in order for you to appreciate what he's playing right there okay let's try it out Come on, look me in the eye and tell me, that does not sound powerful, that is fucking great, let's keep going. I really like that feel right there, I actually don't think Joey would play something like that, but we are going to open a debate later because I think that in here exactly Jay is showing his true personality as a metal drummer, so it's something that I fucking respect a lot. That break requires a lot of stamina, whenever I was playing it on the cover I used rudiments, I did not use singles because it's easier for me to play it that way, but it would be something like this. I just fucking love how the accents blend with the whole song, it is great. And now that you know how the accents go, try to play that fast, it is fucking impossible and that's exactly the reason why I played it with rudiments instead of with singles, that is just crazy, it requires a lot of stamina and remember we're in the middle of the song, we are definitely not done yet, so that's very fucking brave, let's keep going. That break, that is great, we were talking about this earlier about how Joey used the toms with the bass drum in order to create fills and breaks and that is exactly a perfect example of that, before the breakdown that has a very fucking fast phrasing, he is not missing one note, he's orchestrating everything around the toms and it sounds great and also it's not only fast, in the end he's leaving a lot of space with some accents with the floor tom and the snare drum and that fucking creates a lot of tension and I love that because silence sometimes is way more powerful than playing like a fucking machine gun and that's the perfect, perfect fucking mix of those both choices. Lovely, let's keep going. A 
couple of things very fucking fast. The first thing, he's a hard hitter. Okay, that sounds just killer. Also, I think he is not using triggers, at least not in this mix. Maybe he's using them live. But the bass drum sounds very natural. And even though it may not have triggers, it sounds powerful as fuck. So he's definitely hitting very hard. Now, in terms of composition, remember on the other group, he was helping the guitar with the china instead of with the bass drum and the snare drum. Now he's doing quite the opposite. He's helping the guitar with the bass drum and both of the hands are pretty similar so this is a very powerful beat now on the second half of this beat he's going to play the snare on the two and the four so it's definitely going to give a different vibe like faster but again not increasing the tempo it's great let's keep watching Come on, those flams are wonderful. Those are very, very beautiful flams. He knows how to use the flams. It's something that has been used a lot in the history of rock. And it's something that you did not see often with Joey. But here we are watching it and it sounds perfectly. It's the perfect way to end all of those little phrasings, all those little fills. Check that out. They're great, they create tension, again, without the need of playing a lot of fucking notes. There's no need for that, let's keep going. Plus beats, Joey, would you do that? Yes, of course he would. This is something that you, oh! That was clean. That was clean, maybe not perfect, but clean. This is live, motherfuckers, this is not the studio. This is not these fucking green core bands with their fucking shitty techniques and magic computers. This is live, live performance. That is a good drummer right there. And the blast beat sounds sick, and it's something that Joey would have played. Prove me wrong, bitch. Let's keep going. It is good. This is good! Perfecto, amigo! Watch his head. Say, 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 coputa, say. Okay, we have analyzed everything. Is he better than Joey? Bitch, there is no one better than Joey because there is only one Joey. And let me tell you something, this is my advice. Don't try to be the best version of someone that's not you, because you are never going to be better than them. No one's going to be better Joey than Joey. And that's the end of the story right there. I don't know why is that a question. Is he better than Joey? No, no one is better than Joey being Joey. That's obvious. Now, the question that really matters is, is he a good fit for the band? And does he follow the same line of composition that Joey was following? According to what I have just seen and analyzed with you, and I have given you a lot of different examples, we have really talked about really nerdy drum stuff. Yes, obviously he is a good fit. Jay has taken Joey's place. It's not the same drummer, but they are both doing a great fucking work. And also Jay plays some things that Joey would not play and they fit perfectly. They fucking work and that only proves that Jay is a very good metal drummer. They keep releasing music, their music is great. Now, there is a huge difference between those two drummers for one reason, and that's just my opinion. Whatever Joey was playing, he was not only playing it, but also he was creating it back in the day when that did not exist. What Joey did on their early albums was write the history of drumming, literally. Most of the patterns that he was playing, he was the first motherfucker playing them. And most of the times he was playing them at a speed that no one 
on planet Earth could. So it is a very difficult conversation to have because Joey created the building blocks for metal drumming. But that does not mean, obviously, that Jay is not a good drummer. Jay is a fucking brilliant guy. He really knows how to play and how to compose and I think it would be very, very unfair to him to compare his career with Joey's career. Jay creates music and he does a perfect job. Joey created history. And that's basically all I wanted to say about this. So just remember, all of this takes a lot of effort. Please leave a like and a thousand comments. And of course, if you want to help me, you have the new line of merchandising, the group father on my store. You have beanies, hoodies, shirts and hats. Check them out. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you all for staying with me on this wonderful afternoon. Practice, enjoy your practice and see you all very soon on the next videos, buddies. Stay safe and take care.